So there's this question I've been asked a few times and I've hinted at it before. I've semi talked about it before. I've put it kind of by the wayside, but all you really need to know. So the question has been, uh, whatever happened to questionable content? And this is the episode where we're going to talk about it. So, uh, roll the intro. I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the money. The press will be calling. Left on my blessings. I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Phone and progression. It's all that I wanted. The phone went affection. I summon and dub it. Cause I got problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems. I solve them. I run through the money. Welcome back to another episode of the Problems on Problems podcast. I am your host, Mike Santi, and this week, like the intro says, we're going to talk about what happened to questionable content. For those of you that don't know, questionable content uh, was, was, is, we'll say is, mm, was, questionable content was a, a separate platform not even platform, just a separate outlet for uh, a separate outlet that was created by, I guess it's better if I just take you back to the, to the beginning. So my, my co-host and I, if you guys don't know, so a quick timeline, questionable content was a, a show website, media platform, whatever you want to call it, that was geared towards kind of highlighting Charlotte talent. It was started by myself and my co-host, uh, Jam, if you guys have never heard of her before, I've never seen any episodes, I'll link some down in the description, I'll put some, I can't put some up here, but at least you put like pictures, do do do, all that stuff. And some of you have asked like what happened to it, what went on with it, and we're gonna, you know, get a little bit into it. But the the timeline starts is that the timeline starts. The timeline starts back when Jam and I were dating. Um, if it's a surprise to any of you guys, I mean, that's a whole other thing. Yo, why is it a surprise? Fuck y'all. Um, so we were dating and this idea kept kind of ruminating around, ruminating. This idea was brewing around like a some kind of outlet that would draw attention or highlight Charlotte talent or talent that wasn't really kind of spoken for or highlighted uh to begin with i know there's a lot of there's a lot of mainstream influencers and mainstream kind of artists in charlotte and we wanted to kind of you know pull back the curtain turn over some new rocks to highlight people that you might not have heard of may not have heard of before we were always talking about like how to do it best kind of what to do ideas back and forth interactive games videos all that other stuff and I know that for me at the time, I mean, it's no surprise here, I'm big into podcasts. And if I look like I'm in an awkward position, it's because I'm trying to balance my laptop right now, because this is the first episode that your boy's using a laptop for his notes, so that's going to be fun. We were trying to figure it out, and no surprise to you guys, I enjoy podcasts, I, I mean, it's kind of like my lane, I don't even know if it's my lane, I'm not, let's not put it there, between the two of us. I was more into the podcast side of things. She was more into the the video side, the editing side, the photography side, all of that jazz where I was just more video and podcasting. And so we're sitting there in a, in my bedroom kind of talking about like names to go through, all this other stuff because we had had the idea for a bit. And I want to say around 20, 2019, 2018, 2018 or 2019, one of the two. We basically just decided, like, let's start up a name. That way we can get, like, Instagram handles, all that stuff. For those of you, I guess, that don't know or pay attention to what goes into, let's not do that. Let's not mansplain what goes into a business. For anybody that knows, like, business stuff, um, as soon as you, like, have something that you want to name or wanted to protect it, like, you've got to go through, like, trademarking, Instagram handles, um, business registration, all that stuff just to kind of more or less protect your name or IP. So we're sitting there and eventually uh, we get to the point where our, we shoot out the name like questionable content, play on QC, Queen City, we live in Charlotte, all that other stuff. And it started rolling from there. That same night, I don't remember what night it was, I could probably look back into it, maybe I should have done better research. But once we, once we figured out the name, started the Instagram handle, started the the YouTube channel, the Twitter page, all that stuff, just to get just at least have like a secure name or to secure a name that we could start working with. Then became the logos. For those of you who've never seen the logo before, big shout out to my youngest brother, Jason. He is, 
he's not a graphic designer by profession. I think he should be. That's for another day. But yes, he we sat through a bunch of like FaceTimes and Skype meetings and all that other stuff because I live in North Carolina. He lives in New York until we got to the logo that most of you know as questionable content. Once we had all that stuff down, cool, good to go, it really started going into like buying equipment. And Jam had had Jam had a nice camera, all that other stuff, yada, yada. But I had nothing. I had hopes and dreams. Uh, and so eventually, me wanting to like get fully into it, I, I bought an iMac. Um, I bought all this other stuff. I, bought, I started buying equipment. And then I really liked the idea of having a podcast to be able to sit down, interview the people, but with a video component. And it just like, I wouldn't let it go. Like, yeah, I was going to do that for a while. So, I mean, as you can see. And so the the guest list started like starting to like plan for guests how we would run it what kind of format we would use all the stuff that goes in and out to producing this meanwhile we're still trying to like get it off the ground start i basically was just bankrolling it uh we were bankrolling it with our day jobs and everything was kind of going good catching st- or picking up steam and then we broke up and i know Mike, I mean, we all know. Like, why, why would you start a business with a significant other? And, I, I mean, we get it. We get it. I understand. Whole thing. Got it. Cool. Why do that? Because, I mean, why not? And so, after all this stuff, all this planning, all this other stuff, I mean, all this planning, all this preparation... We break up, and then it's kind of like a, where do we go from here? Because we both still believed in the project. We both still still believed in the business side of it. It was more just like, who's going to, who's going to take the flag and run with it? Take the flag? Who's going to take the ball and run with it? And so I started kind of focusing on the podcast side, the podcast side heavy. Like I started uh, booking guests, started setting up times buying way more equipment so that I could have multiple ways to record or multiple inputs for recording would have like a a camera that was decent enough to capture everything. So I would have the video component and then really just started going from there. First episode is coming out. And for those of you that, for those of you that don't know what better way to start this whole thing off of highlighting Charlotte talent and everything like that, than having jam come on as a guest, which she was still very much a part of questionable content at the time. But yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, Hey, babe, we know each other. We know where we live, all that stuff. Let's have you come on as a guest on the first episode, kind of tell your story and at least we'll get the ball rolling from there. And so then, <laughs> That episode, I, I really wish I could. I, I mean, I probably will go back eventually. One of the, maybe no, who knows? It's too late. It's in the past. But that episode, first episode, I royally fucked up part of it where the video component was just gone for about the last five minutes of the video. But then there was also just like a, a weird kind of audio setting. It doesn't matter. But she was a first episode. There was a few kinks to work out in that episode. And then from there, it was kind of just like, Hey, her schedule got busy. My schedule was a little bit lighter on the side where, or a little more flexible where I could start booking guests here and there. And I mean, a lot of those guests were friends of mine. So it was kind of easy to get them to come over, hang out, record an episode, move on. And around, I want to say episode three or four jam schedule kind of opened up. And so, Hey, we, we could interview guests together, and I think that was the, the first time Jam came back to the show or was able to, like, co-host the show. I want to say that was Gray, uh, Queen City Food Queen, which you will see more of her in the future. But, yeah, Gray came on, killed it, so on and so forth. And for the most part, it seemed as though, like, we were we were doing well as business partners and co-hosts being able to, like, separate the two where it's, like, We've got enough like on camera chemistry, podcast chemistry. We could riff off of each other and still ask questions for the host or to the guest. And so we did that. We did a couple more. Then Hispanic Heritage Month came around. We shot a promo video, all that good stuff. And things started to get kind of weird from there. And I don't know how else to describe it except for 
things were just off. I think it started getting to the point in our like off camera dynamic where honestly we couldn't really like fake yeah, we couldn't really fake like being friends on camera and then being strangers off camera. And it kind of came to a came to a tipping point when we had one episode left of Hispanic Heritage Month and I I started doing a lot of other projects and so having to having to edit the podcast, book the guests, go through all that stuff just started kind of wearing on me um, to the point where that and then my day job like it was just it started to get to be too much and so I reached out to Jam I said hey is there do you have the capacity to like edit this last episode and uh, I guess a little backtracking on that is that like up until that point all the other ep- all the episodes up until that last one um, that never aired by the way you know it's locked away in the vault but I had edited all of those not really saying that as like a a pat on the back or anything like that but more so just a just like yeah I, I kind of got not tired but I just got overworked uh, and overwhelmed doing all of it and so I said hey man I know I've been doing all this for a while like we've talked back and forth we set up some plans or sometimes to kind of like exchange data copy data onto like sd cards things like that um or onto hard drives that way she'd be able to like go back to her place edit the episode and we would just kind of go back and forth with the editing and then transparently just on a i guess a mental health or an emotional health thing it's probably not the best idea post breakup to have to like hear and see your ex over and over again when they're not actually like there Um, i think it's pretty pretty normal slash healthy that post breakup you there's you guys are broken up there's that space there's that like take your time to be yourself kind of thing and like have your own kind of safe spaces if you want to call it that and editing your editing episodes for hours on end with your ex in there um, in your house or in your apartment weighs on you a little bit and so I eventually was just like at my at my breaking point we fixed all this or not fix all the stuff we set up kind of stuff so that we could shift the the editing responsibility over to jam and i'm not i'm not going to speak for her at all she's her own person all that good stuff mad respect yada yada you know what i mean but we had a we had a conversation or a couple conversations that basically led us to the conclusion that we didn't think continuing we didn't think that continuing to shoot the show edit anything like that would really be healthy for either one of us and so like the responsible adults that we are we kind of just we we more or less decided that like it was time for not me we no we didn't do anything. Jam decided that it was probably best for the entirety if she stepped away from questionable content, which I think, I don't know, not, I don't know. I think it was like a hard decision, but it was also like a big decision that was really beneficial to both of us. So thank you. Props to you. I want to say at the same time, I had already started like thinking about problems on problems because I was like, well, I'm not going to give up like a, anything like that. But yeah, so we kind of like put put blah, 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 kind of put questionable content on the back burner or the creative back burner. I mean, I appreciate the conversations that we had and all that stuff and the conclusion that we came to because at the end of the day, you really got to like watch out or yeah, you really got to look out for your for your own mental well-being, your own emotional well-being. And sometimes it's easier to not easier. Sometimes it's better to have a clean break instead of anything kind of like lagging along. And so that kind of leads us at like here. So what actually happened to questionable content? And the that's the long answer, but the short answer is that like, it's kind of just uh, in hibernation right now. Like I, I mean, I own the, I own outright the trademark to the questionable content logo. And I still really believe in the idea of it. I really like that there are other outlets doing that right now. Like um, Charlotte is creative. They're doing that. Oh, Paige with NC on scene. She's doing that right now where there's still this, this kind of appetite or vibe, if you want to call it that there's still this like appreciation for the underrepresented 
artists in Charlotte, not just artists, but yeah, artists, musicians, uh, photographers, videographers, business owners, there's still that idea where it's like, hey, let's highlight what makes Charlotte great. And so I still believe in the project. I still believe in kind of what it stands for. It's just that the way it was before may not be what it looks like in the future. And because I own the trademark to it, your boy can take some creative licensing what the logo starts looking like and because of that you'll start seeing some things which you know shout out to jason again but you'll start seeing a couple changes coming to the look of problems on problems um, this summer like i said before we're full swing into getting guests booked and kind of being able to use this platform to highlight charlotte talent in a different way to be let's say tell the more unrefined stories of influencers um, and artists and the like in Charlotte and really give you kind of like a, a real feel and really a funny feel to what makes Charlotte great. So, so with that, I say, hey, questionable content was great. It might come back. Who knows? But if anything, the spirit of it still lives on in Problems on Problems. And I'm kind of excited to see what the next chapter holds for us. And for us, I mean me, me and problems on problems. Let's not get that twisted. But other than that, all that rambling, we're going to take a quick break. I will come back. We'll talk about the debate because Lord knows y'all need to talk about clogging toilets. And we'll get you guys out of here. P -O -P, all the and we're back with the great debate. And boy, do I have, I don't even want to say a lot to say, but we got some things to talk about. Last episode, I asked you, would you rather clog the toilet on a first date or your first day on the job? We set very specific parameters. If you need to see that, go see the IGTV video clip, go see last week's episode, all that good stuff, just to let you know that, hey, which one would you rather clog? And 82% of you said that you would rather clog the toilet on your job, which leads me to the follow-up comments that uh that i saw and a lot of them basically had the sentiment of uh mm, man fuck that job that's exactly how you all felt and i'm not upset about that at one bit you know me i'm not the biggest fan of jobs but we'll talk about that later i don't know where i stand because me being the the hopeless romantic that i am is that true i don't actually know i think it's m easier for me to like get over embarrassment if it's like me in like me being embarrassed amongst a large crowd compared to me being embarrassed one on one. Like I think it's way harder for me to be embarrassed one on one. I'm gonna say, you know what, I'd rather clog the toilet on the job. Because number one, I don't care. They have a full like staff and everything like that. But if I clog the toilet on a first date, I know the idea from the other side, like the people that would rather clog the toilet on the first date, is that like there are plenty other fish in the sea. And if they if they're not the one or anything like that, then yes clogging the toilet is going to be like a bad thing. There probably won't be a second date, yada, yada. But if they really do like you, then clogging the toilet's not going to really sway that opinion. So I could see that, but I'm going to still pick the job because like, fuck that job. So 82% of you picked clogging the toilet on the first day on the job. This week, would you rather give up TV slash streaming or music? And I really threw in streaming there because I know it was going to be easy to just say, oh, yeah, well, I'll give up TV. Like, that's easy, yada, yada. I mean, who knows? Some of you guys like TV more than music. But really, streaming and visual media in general, would you rather give that up or would you rather give up music? You can't have both in this one. So let me know. Let me know in the polls. Let me know in the comments. I personally think, ooh, this is what I get for not thinking about these questions before I ask y'all. Ooh. I'm going to say I'd rather give up, oh gosh, oh no, I'd rather give up TV and streaming services, yeah, even though, I mean, fuck, <laughs> most of you guys are watching that now, so don't give that up, keep watching and all that stuff, but yeah, I think TV without music or visual media without music, it's just kind of dull, and even like, I don't really use, I don't have cable, that's a lie, I have cable, I don't really use the cable that I have. I more or less just like stream everything if I'm gonna watch something. But yeah, I think there are times where like I didn't even have a TV uh, and by times. I'm not talking about like tough times or anything like that. I'm saying like I made the decision to not have a TV and I don't think my life was really without or 
like I had like a feeling that I was like less than or like feeling as though I was missing out on something, but I can't imagine if I never had music. I'm not saying I know how to sing. That's debatable. I keep lying on this episode, but yeah, I really just think that I don't know if I, I don't know what life would be like without music. I'd rather just like, and even then if I'm going to watch sporting events or anything like that, that doesn't mean like I can't just go to them for like, go to them in person or anything like that. Like, yeah, you know, you're probably not going to go to the world cup. You're probably not going to go to like the Super Bowl, but hey, somebody's going to tell you about it later anyways. So who cares? So I'm going to say I would rather give up TV and streaming, stick with the music, stick with the stuff that uh makes you feel good or bad. I mean, it makes you feel all emotions. You know, it's music. I don't have to explain it to you guys. <laughs> But yeah, so let me know down in the comments. Let me know in the polls. Um, That brings us to the last part of the show. The thing we do every Friday, the Friday follows. This week, uh, two amazing photographers, two very talented photographers. The first one being Jen Otero. Um, You can follow her at Jen Otero Photography on Instagram. She such a beautiful soul. We'll call it that, a beautiful soul. Uh, She's great behind the camera. And the editing is just on point, so... Go look her up. Go follow her on Instagram at Jen Otero Photography. And the second person we're going to shout out today is Kevin. You can follow him at kg.pixels. Mans is doing bits behind that lens, making y'all look good, okay? I mean, the dude knows what he's doing. He's got an eye for it. Um, And his edits are chef's kiss. Don't really know if that's going to make it into the episode. But yeah man's killing it i can't speak highly enough about his at least to me um his composition his lighting everything so make sure you go follow him at kg.pixels on instagram but yeah guys that's the end of the show i know it's not a lot of jokes not a lot of weird stories this week maybe just well just telling you all the history of some shit but that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the questionable kafak. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on the Problems on Problems YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow us at Problems on Problems Podcast on Instagram, at Problems underscore pod on Twitter. And per usual, go follow your boy on all social media, Mike Santi18. Don't forget it. You know the vibes. And like I always say, guys, if it's not a good time, hope it's a good story, and I will see you next week. I wake up, flex, I'm down that check, no drip this, what? tell him run it up, no sleep, no rest, might crash, might wreck, but first I stretch, tell him run it up, I wake up, flex, I'm down that check, no drip this.